I love watching. Mm -hmm. No, Jack, I don't think you do. That's <laughs> amateur mm -hmm. so golfers would shudder, shudder at that, um, despite the greens being a lot, a lot quicker than the ones we play on. Hi guys, and welcome to the Golf Magic Chat Show. This week we have a debut for Alex Lodge uh, with no Andy around. Uh, so we're going to talk the WGC uh, and also look ahead to the US PGA. So let's get into it. All right, coming in, guys. Might as well start off talking about the WGC. JT winning it. Uh, yeah, how do you think everyone's building up to the PGA then? Yeah, I think week before the PGA, so <clears throat> WGC is a massive tournament and we was expecting a lot. Um, cracking field. I don't, I don't think the tournament let us down at all. Um, we, we had a decent pick as well. We had Daniel Berger, 28-1 to 1 each way, coming in a tied second in the end with a fantastic final round. And JT was brilliant. That, that final on the final round, you, you just calculated it so well. Um, having Bones on the bag with him as well, you, I think that, that, that proved a lot that final day. Um, to climb the leaderboard. I think he was eight to one at the start of the final round to win that. So it just shows there was a host of talent above him. Um, kept looking back to his well, near his best, uh, defending that title and defends again this week. Um, yeah, players like uh, Phil Mickelson who had fantastic final round. Tom Lewis, you know, it was, it was a real good final day. Um, and we mentioned Thomas before, you know, when Andy was saying that he let the uh, he let that lead slip, and we said, "Will he do it again?" And I, I said, "I don't think he will. I think don't you know how good Justin Thomas is, um, and we thought that he'd bounce back from this, and that's exactly what he's done. And he's got that 13th win now, the third youngest player on the PGA Tour to reach 13 wins behind Jack Nicklaus, who done it at 25, and Tiger Woods, who done it at 23, which absolutely blows my mind. 13 wins at 23 years old is just a crazy a crazy stat. But JT back to world number one, and I think he's going to be a hot favourite this week to go and win again." What do you think, Alex? Yeah, um, I remember last year it was um, Brooks v. Uh, Rory uh, in the final round. Um, Brooks obviously outlasted him, and so I had quite a um, quite high expectations for the final round. And obviously we had um, Brooks versus Justin, and it was just as entertaining. I do feel, although Justin obviously his final round was, was pretty impressive, 65, 15-16. Um, he got the uh, luck of the Irish there on his tee shot on 15, 320 yard. Oh, definitely, definitely. But off the cart path, that should be out of bounds. <laughs> out this um 16 um spraying his drive nearly out of bounds and then to be fair to him his third shot was really nice and that was the difference between him and brooks on the day because brooks had the exact same shot his shot didn't check up and he bogeyed um mm. and kind of see his um his head went a little bit which is completely understandable but um as you said i think jt is going to be extremely hard to beat um this week he's got more or less every single uh, facet of his game on point um, and I really do think he suits TPC Harding Park very well. So it'll be very mm. interesting moving forwards. What do you think it was on that, on that 16th hole with that birdie? Obviously, they were in a very similar position for their third shots, both uh, Kepka and Thomas. It just seemed that Thomas got that little bit of extra turf with the wedge, didn't he? And it just helped it check up a bit. I think maybe if yeah. Brooks had that shot again, he would have played it a bit more similar to that. Yeah, I've seen people saying that Brooks actually called it a bit clean, which is why it didn't check up, because you've mm -hmm. got to see one. On those greens, he wasn't. It wasn't in the deep rough. He was right in the middle of the fairway. He should be getting some sort of check. Um, it looked like it the downslope as well. So I do. I do really think Brooks got super unlucky um, in that yeah. stretch of holes. Um, nevertheless, um, I saw he tweeted after the um, after the round saying that he's coming in hot to TPC. Um, mm -hmm. And given his like, I'm I'm going to struggle to tip Brooks either way for that. Um, just because of some of the things we saw um, last week, uh, notably his. I think it's four putt on round two uh, on the sixth hole from three foot. I mean, mm -hmm. amateur golfers would shudder, shudder at that, um, despite the greens being a lot a lot quicker than the ones we play on. Um, mm -hmm. Either way, going back to JT, that every every single bit of his game is amazing, and having bones in the bag as well, um, despite a somewhat icy uh, reunion between him and Phil in the last round. Yeah, it was a bit odd, wasn't it? it was uh, the, the, the rumors saying that he they met on the putting green before this mm -hmm. one, but either way, it seems somewhat of a um, Icy reunion for um, someone who's won several majors with each other. Um, yeah. But yeah, it'll be very interesting uh, for the next week coming forwards. I think what you said as well is so important. Everything about JT's game at the moment is so good. You know, like that final hole where he sort of took the free wood off the tee, pushed it a little bit right. And, you know, if, if JT had been struggling with like mentally when he lost a few weeks ago, we might have seen a different shot from there. You know, he, he pushed it. It was a tough spot on that rough, thick rough. You know, he was standing on the slope a little bit, pushed it a little bit long. But then the, the chip, 
with the pressure on the shoulders, which is fantastic, wasn't it? To leave a tap in for par was just shows how how far his game's come lately. And like yeah, I said, exactly. I think this week he could really prove himself to be a top world number one at Harding Park. Yeah, absolutely. His his mental game. He he seems like a veteran in a way, although he's still a a young boy, uh, very young to get to thirteen uh, PGA Tour wins. He's still showing that he's got a very um, old head on his shoulders. Um, an interesting stat to note from um, the the previous tournament was that I think his putting stats, stroke game putting, was about minus 1.83. So really, really bad. And yet he's still one by three shots. So you've got to think his his seasonal stats for his putting is pretty, pretty poor. I think it's the one thing that kind of, I'd say, lets him down, just stops him from winning every tournament. And if he won a, a WGC with such poor putting statistics... If he then follows that with a bit of an improvement this week, there's, there's, I don't think there's any chance anyone's going to catch him, really. No, I think you're right. I think you're right. Was anyone you was really disappointed with over the last week? I feel, I feel like Ricky Fowler let, let himself down a little bit in, the, in that final round, I think. Yeah. He's someone everyone's R- always rooting for. Similar to a Tony Finau, he's someone you, you like to see win. Um, yeah. Met Ricky myself, a great guy. You, you just want him to do well. You want him to win tournaments and especially majors, you know, before we've always said Ricky Fowler is one of the best players who have never won a major. He's actually said that to me himself. So he's got the confidence, but, you know, and then you see, you see this thing last week and you think he's in a position where he could really go on and win there and then just doesn't get the job done again in the final round. Yeah, it's, it's I don't want to group him with those, those players that I think will kind of falter in the final round. And I don't think I will because he's had three top 20s in the last four tournaments. So he's still doing pretty decent in terms mm-hmm. of, the swing changes he's made before that, I think he was having like miscut, miscut, like not really doing well at all. So it shows that he's on kind of an upward trend, but I didn't have that much faith with him going forward for the final round, because again, he hasn't been in that position, I think since the think, century tournament of champions right at the start of this year. Um, I, w- I was disappointed, but I'm still happy at how he's performing. Um, Brendan Todd as well. Um, I, again, yeah. I, kind of, I kind of expected him to slip up a little bit. He has won this, this season, but at the Travelers against Dustin, he kind of did something similar. I think he had a triple on, uh, on the back of nine and kind of gave it up a little bit. And you could kind of see within his round, he wasn't really himself for the last round, which is, again, as much as um, you can criticise him, I think a year ago he was something like 700th in the world and now he's approaching, um, he's nearly number one in the Phillips Cup rankings. He's playing against some of the best people in the world. And what's really interesting about the way he plays, and I think he ranks I think, maybe dead last in driving distance. So we've had Bryson bursting onto the scene, hitting 350, 400 yard drives with his 195 mile an hour ball speed. We've got mm-hmm. Brendan Todd with I think about 155 to 158 uh, swing speed, which is about 10 to 10 to 8 miles an hour less than the average club head speed in the PGA Tour. And a lot, a lot of amateurs who are decent do swing faster than that. And yet he's pretty much tearing up a lot of courses. As I said, he mm-hmm. I think he's one. On Friday, I think he shot minus five with no bogeys, which is absolutely amazing for someone who was probably hitting about 250, 260 yards, of course, that yeah. has 500-yard par fives. So it's great to see that kind of variation in the, in the talk about driving distance because we've had people, people write to the RNA. We've had, I think, um, and a few notable people say that you've got to do something, change equipment, change the golf ball. And I don't know if you have to, really, because you've got mm. people, Brendan Todd beating... Webb right. Simpson too. Is an example yeah, yeah, exactly. That, yeah. Yeah. I think it's, it's really just, there are certain courses where you can overpower it. Bryson has shown that, but I don't think you've got to change any sort of equipment. I think you've just got to kind of alter the courses in a way. And I think we are going mm-hmm. to do that um, at the PGA this week. Like I said, with Todd, his, his putting, it's just, he's, he's kind of nowhere really. You know, he had those two wins, but suddenly he looks like he's one of the best putters on the PGA Tour. You know, he's so, he's so confident on the greens. And like I said, it's showing that he doesn't need the power because once he's on those greens, he's, he's as good as anyone out there, isn't he? Yeah, it's, it's, it's unbelievable to watch. It's almost frustrating in a way when, um, when you bet on the player. I was watching Brooks on, um, on round two when he obviously had his pretty, pretty poor round. And that's when um, Brendan was doing really well. And I was mm-hmm. seeing Brooks have more or less the identical part each, each hole, about 12 foot or so, and didn't make a single part. Like, didn't, did not have anything close all day. And then there was... Brendan, literally every single hole, he was holding something in between the six and 20 foot range. I'm thinking, mm. like, that's the, the, the thing you've got. You've got a putt to be able to play well in this, in this tournament. Yes, driving distance is amazing, but you can see if you, if you putt as well as he can, you, you'll more or less beat any single player. Mm-hmm. No, you're right. You're right. All right, cool. James, get your tips for the US PGA. Start with you this week, Jack, since there's no Andy. Um, give us a yeah. 
So we've got TPC Harding Park in uh, San Francisco. It's an $11 million purse this week, even more than uh, the WGC last week. Uh, par 70, 7,234 yards. And of course, Brooks Kepka is looking for a three-peat being the defending champion the last two years in a row. But he's not on my tips this week. Um, I'm going to go for, he's the favourite, but I'm going to have Justin Thomas as my first one, uh, from 10 to 1. Bit of value there still as a favourite. You know, we've seen some quite short odds for a few favourites this, uh, lately on the PGA Tour. Then the Sham, where a few weeks ago, was about 6 or 7 to 1. So I think 10 to 1 offers still quite a lot of value. Um, and I just think going off of the last week, I just can't not back him. I think he looked fantastic. Uh, that final round, shoot five under, he showed his class. He showed why he's the world number one at the moment. Um, only 27 years old and accomplished so much already. Um, obviously won the US PGA Championship in 2017. So this would be his second, a great time for him to win his second major. And with bones on the bag, I think that that could be the secret weapon again this week. So Justin Thomas, 10 to 1, the first pick. Uh, second pick, a bit more value here, 22 to 1. I'm going for Xander Chauvelet. Um, I think this course is, is a, it's a big driving course. And Alex, we just spoke about how on the PJ Tour, some players are proving you don't need to be driving, but this is a course where it's, it's a long course for a par 70. Um, and strokes gained off the tee is going to be a big stat this week. Um, and Chauvelet is seventh in strokes gained off the tee. He was first in that stat in the, the Memorial Tournament a few weeks ago. Um, five top six finishes in 11 major starts. So I think he just he goes to show that this guy can turn up for the big events. Um, and the US PGA is often considered a tournament for players to find their uh, maiden major. So I really like Chauvet's chances at 22 to 1. What about you, Alex? Yeah, so I know I mentioned uh, just a second ago that, it's, that some things about Brooks um, make it difficult to back him. But looking at his previous performances at majors, um, I know I mentioned in our US PGA preview, he's had four wins, um, two top fives and turn a tied six in his last 10 majors so that's seven out of ten he's placed i think one wow. was quite close, close as well he it's almost like he's a different player at majors and even kind of we saw last week that he kind of turns it on when it's like it matters to him more um this course tpc harding park you said a par 70 he usually plays a par 72 it's about 7200 yards but more like 7600 yards um they've said the rough is like high more like us open kind of vibes with that and mm. if you you kind of get in there it's unplayable so it's going to seem that um it's going to be drivers for a lot of players and looking at brooks last week i think he his strokes gained um t to green was absolutely impeccable barely missing a fairway and a few hiccups here and there on the 18th of, for instance in round four um but i don't think there's going to be a player more confident more motivated than brooks um currently right now he's 11 to 1 frustratingly about a week ago he was 20 to 1 but then obviously mm. he kind of shot 62 on thursday and it dropped right down and i think he's just second favorite right now um, but each way money, I I would bet my house on him coming in the top 11, which I think they're paying places for because there's there's just no chance he's not doing it. It's the coup yeah. that suits him. It's going to be perfect. Um, so so it's kind of, if you put an each, each way bet on that, you're going to get your money back at least. Um, my other two bets I'm going for, I'm going for a bit um, of high odds. Uh, first player is Harris English, who's been, whose form has been quite good this season. Um, I think about 110 to 1. Um, places of um, 11 places I think he does quite, he'll do quite well um, his strokes gain tee screen especially has been pretty high for the season always kind of around the, the top 10 or so and he's always been kind of flirting with a win um, throughout 2020 so I kind of expect expect him to do pretty well in the first round run one or two maybe um, and then probably finish somewhere in the top 20 or so so I don't expect him to win but maybe def definitely place, place money um, and my third tip is Ricky Wierinski and he's kind of burst onto the scene in the last two weeks on the um, Barracuda Championship. Uh, he won it. Um, obviously, it was a bit of a quiet tournament because it was a WGC um, in place of it. Um, but he won that pretty well in a decent field over um, people like Mario Grillo um, and other people too. Um, and he did pretty well in the tournament previously. I think he was in the top 10 as well. So, so form-wise, he does pretty well. And 175 mm -hmm. to 1. Um, I, can't, I can't look away from that because that looks pretty decent uh, for each way uh, place-wise. Again, I don't think he's going to win, but if I'm going top 10 or top 20 odds, um, he, you can get probably a, a decent odds for that as well. So I definitely a few good on him. I think it just goes to show how bad McElroy is playing that we've got a tournament and a course that really suits Rory McElroy and we're not picking him. You know, it's, this is the guy who's before the lockdown, you know, the, the best player in the world playing the performance of his life and we thought he was going to absolutely just clean up trophy after trophy and he's yeah. come back looking like a not even a top 50 player. Um, 
It's a yeah, shame. It's you know, I, I'm a big fan of Roy Mackerel. I know, you know, us Brits all are pretty much, but he's, he's got to sort it out. You know, like you mentioned with Brooks, he's, he turned it on last week. You know, he had that ability to go, you know what, I'm the defending champ here. I'd like to win it. I'm going to turn it on. And Rory's got that ability and it's something that's not quite right in his game at the moment. Yeah, a part of me thinks, is he a player that responds well to crowds because he does so well and it's literally like mm. a swing. Um, his first round at WGC, he was I think, plus five at one point. I think he was literally dead last. And uh, I was thinking, what, what is this player? Like, he's not the player that we saw six months ago. Mm. Um, he did then, to fairness to him, a turn around a little bit, round two especially, I think, seven out of his first 10 uh, approaches to the green um, within 12 foot. So he's still got that like spark there. It's just... The, he's now got a consistent trend of not performing well and I'm thinking I don't want to I would never bet on him I really would want him to win if he wins even if I don't bet on him I'm, I'm very very happy because he's such a likeable player um, yeah. Swing is one of the greats that I've, that I've seen so far um, but it's just kind of difficult to watch at some stages of what he's doing um, notably last week he was getting his distances wrong we were going straight at the flag but he was coming off with a 10 yard short 10 yards long I'm thinking is he just not dialed in at all does he not know his his mm. Is. Um, so he'll be a really interesting player to watch this week um, as will Tiger Woods as well I, I'm, I would not never go near him in terms of odds wise and he's 25 to 1 I love watching mm. no Jack I don't think you do but I think <laughs> he's a really enjoyable player to watch just because obviously he's, he's, he's vintage he's one, of, he's one of the greats but the hype around him there are a lot of players that I would probably just, just, just as much like to watch as he does um, mm. And because of obviously the hype that we have around him every time, his limited schedule, the fact he's 25 to 1, I th- obviously I think you said Zana Shuffle is around 20 to 1. I mm-hmm. think, and um, I'll happily come on the chat show next week when he beats Shuffle, but I think that's absolutely <laughs> ridiculous. He should be 50, 60 to 1. I know he's no, a- you're right. You're right. It's, it's crazy. Um, he could turn it on. I've seen people saying he's going to get a top 10. It's Tiger at the Majors. Um, but yeah, I, I, I really don't. <laughs> <laughs> don't be silly Alex come yes, on sir. there's no top 10 happening for Tiger any major this year well, we'll see we'll see <laughs> no, hopefully we can pick a winner um, yeah good to see Rory put in a good performance but uh, I think you're right Kepka could be one to watch he, he turns it on for these majors he, he loves to win these big tournaments and prove people wrong but no, I fancy Showplay to make his maiden major this year yeah I, I, I'm a big fan of your picks as well I think we've definitely got a, um, a winner between the two of us yeah um, fingers crossed yeah. Yeah, and definitely, maybe some place money either way yeah alright cool nice one well hopefully we get a winner this week um, and if you can guess the winning score you may have a chance of winning some limited edition tailor made head covers all you need to do is head to our last video uh, on our YouTube channel um, and follow the instructions um, so good luck for that uh, and we'll see you next week <laughs>